You might think I'm running so good, right? So just wait for it. I'm all in. What's up, everybody? We're back at Windy City Poker Championship, place where everything started and place that I definitely advise you to check it out if you're around Chicago area. And the reason for that is not only the friendly people and friendly environment they have there, but also because of how good is their game. Their cash game is a 1-2, but I personally call it a fake 1-2. And the reason for that is because you see so many limp callers, straddlers, and people that are really loose, that you can really make a substantial win rate in the same level or better of many 2-5 tables around US. Welcome to the Poker Profit channel, the first poker vlog created to help you becoming a better poker player. I buy in for 500, that is the max at this game. The first hand in this episode, I have queen 6 offsuit on the button, I got 3 limpers before me, and if you know my strategy already, I like to build a loose image for myself. So every time I sit at a table and I see a spot like that, I like to exploit the limpers in position. So I raise to 15, everybody folds and I take down the first pot. The hand right next to it, I have kings in the cutoff, two limpers before me, I'm gonna raise again to 15 in position. Under the gun plus one calls, the flop comes 8, 4, 10, rainbow. He checks to me, I see back to 20, he calls, the turn is a jack, he checks again, I'm gonna keep betting, I bet 45, he calls pretty fast, I believe the majority of the times I'll be winning here. The river comes a blank, a 3 of spades, he checks again, I believe a mistake that many people do is not betting for value in a spot like this, he just has so many hands that are losing to my pocket kings, and that can't call for a bet here in the river, that I'm just leaving too much money in the table if I just check back here, so I bet 100. Alright, I wanna be on your video. He calls, I show the kings. And he mucks. Winning $180 in less than an hour of game. This next hand, I'm in the cutoff with ace jack offsuit. Two limpers before me, as usual. I raise to 15. Four players call, they're all out of position against me. The flop comes ace 9 3 with two clubs. They all check to me. I bet 35, little less than half of the pot, only the middle position calls, we go heads up to the turn, the turn comes a 6 of hearts, now there are 2 flush draws in the board, and then he goes all in for $180. In this spot, I believe there are gonna be some 2 pairs in his range, but there are definitely gonna be many flush draws as well, or combo draws like 7-8 suited with hearts or clubs, or gut shot flush draw, or even just a flush draw. And I believe that if he had value, he would tend either to bet small or to check and let me bet so he check raises. So $180 for a pot that has 324 and I believe many times I will be winning here. So after thinking for a while, reasoning all of the things I just told you, I decide to call. The river comes a 7 of spades, pretty much a blank. Didn't hit, buddy. You got a pair? Big pair? Yeah, you I know. Know. Three hours and 17 minutes of game, winning almost $500. This hand I'm in the button with 10 jacks suited, under the gun raises to 6, hijack calls, and here I think a call would be perfectly fine, but I'd rather 3 bet in position here, cause I don't think their range is so strong, and I wanna be the aggressor on this hand. Under the gun and hijack call, the flop comes 4, 7, 9 with 1 club, I have a gut shot, 2 overs and run and run a flush draw. Under the gun plus 1 leads out to 25, hijack calls, and here I believe I have all the over pairs in my range. And when the under the gun plus 1 leads out to 25, I don't think he is that strong. So because I don't think he is so strong, and I have all the aces, kings, queens and jacks in my range, plus the fact that I have a gut shot and 2 overs, I think this is a great spot to raise here, be the aggressor and put pressure on them. So raising something around $80 would put a lot of pressure on him and I could still bet turn and make him fold. So that's what I do, I raise to $80, they both fold and I take the pot. I change seats, honestly I don't know exactly why, it was either because this table was good or because my table broke. The first hand, I get king queen offsuit 
One limper before me, I raised to 11 in position. Most likely I raised small like this because I wanted to play in position against this player and I wanted to let him still call with the hands that I'm dominated like Queen Jack, King Jack, King 10, King 9, Queen 9, those type of hands. Only the button calls instead, so we're playing heads up and I'm out of position. The flop comes 7-7-6. Seven, seven, Most likely this flop didn't hit none of us. So I'm gonna keep betting. I see bet 11, which now I would rather see betting bigger here. He calls, then I get lucky and I hit my pair of kings. Now I'm gonna try to extract maximum value here. I bet 30, he calls, the river comes a spade. He could totally have a flush draw and got there. But many times in Texas Hold'em on the river, you have two options. One would be to check and call for any bet and other would be to bet and fold in case he raises. And in this 1-2 at Windy City, most players are not aggressive enough to justify the first option. So I choose the second option, which is betting, and in case he raises, I'm just gonna fold here. So I bet $80, I go big trying to polarize my range, he calls, I show the king-queen, and it's good. The next hand is a bomb pot, in case you're not familiar with it. Everybody puts $10 and get two cards, it comes out two flops and then we start the hand from there. The upper board comes 10-8-7 with two hearts, the lower board comes 7-2-jack with two clubs. Then I look at my hand and first I see a 7 and then I see a 10. Wow, both boards hit me pretty hard. I check, hoping someone bets after me, that's what happens, cut off bets 50. And then the button calls the 50. Everybody else folds to me. And here I believe is a clear, clear spot to check raise. My hand is just too good to call out of position. Effective stacks are deep, almost $600. So I'm gonna check raise here. I raise to 175, which is a sizing that I could definitely shove in the turn and find a fold. But that's not what happens. Cutoff goes all in for 260. Button calls the all in, having around 270 dollars behind. So here, even though I don't think the button has too much fold equity, I think my hand will be ahead of him most of the times. So it's time for a big pot here. I go all in. Button calls. Man, this is gonna be fun, and I don't think I'm. I I, I don't know. Look at this one. I show my hand and they don't, unfortunately. 1480 in the pot, and let's see how the board runs out. I make a full house in the bottom board and two pair in the upper board. It ends up the cutoff had a straight in the upper board and we chop the main pot, but there's still the side pot, which is 540 total. So I end up scooping the side pot and chopping the main one. Winning almost a thousand dollars now. You might think I'm running so good, right? So just wait for it. This next hand, I'm in the small blind with queen three offsuit. Two limpers and I complete. Four players see the flop. The flop is a great one. I make two pair. I check, hoping someone to bet. But it's not what happens. Everybody checks. The turn comes a five. Now I bet six dollars. Big blind calls. And then the button goes all in for twenty dollars. And I believe here most of the times I will be winning. He might have many flush draws in his range. And as he went all in, I don't think just calling is a good decision here, especially because of the two flush draws. So I decide to raise a size that if the big line has a flush draw, he is not getting a good price to call. So I raise to 46, big blind folds. I have two pair. I have to say That's nice. That's nice that you have. You don't have a lot of chips. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about being honest. I show the queen three and he shows pocket fives. Wow. Nice. Making a set in the turn. <laughs> Next hand I have 10 jacks suited in the cutoff. Under the gun straddles, two limpers before me. I race to 25 in position. Only the straddler calls. We're playing heads up. The flop comes four, five, jack, rainbow. I make top pair. He checks to me. I bet 20 and he goes instant all in. I call. A set of jacks, huh? No. I, I just know I'm not folding, but I feel like I'm losing. 
The turn comes a 3, River comes a 7, he says he has 2 pair, and then he shows 7-3 off -sum. Going all in with a gut shot in the flop, missing it but hitting his 2 pairs. And that's fine, it happens, but guys, that's the game you can find at Windy City. He called out of position, a 25 raise with 7-3 offsuit, hit a gut shot in the flop, shoved all in for 135 and end up winning the hand. I'm actually glad for him, hands like this one shows why any person that is willing to learn about this game can really make a profit out of it and why poker is so popular, because even the worst player will get lucky like this sometimes and start loving this game. But you can be certain that if he keeps playing like this, he will give it all back through time. Next hand I'm in the button with pocket 9s, cutoff raises to 12, I lean towards raising much more than calling here, but in this particular hand I decided just to call in position. Hijack calls as well, so 3 players see the flop. The flop is a great one, 2, 4, 6, rainbow. They check to me, most likely I'll be winning here, so I'm gonna bet for value and to protect my equity. I bet 25, Hijack calls, which is great. She limped called pre-flop, so I believe I will rarely be losing here. The turn is a good one, a 7 of diamonds. She checks again, I believe I'm still winning many times here, unless she has either 8-5 or 6-7, which she has in her range, but I believe most of the times I will still be winning here with this 7 on the turn. So I bet 45, she calls, the river comes a 10 of spades, she checks again, and here I don't think it would be a bad idea to bet again, but instead I decided to check back, she shows ace-5 and my 9s are good. Next and last hand of this episode, I got black queens on the middle position, one limper before me, I raise to 12, under the gun calls, we go heads up to the flop, the flop comes 8, 7, 7, with 2 diamonds, he checks to me, I bet 16, and he calls, the turn comes a queen, I don't even think I needed this card, but of course it's very welcome, he checks again, and here I don't think there's a good reason for me to bet big, I'm just gonna bet an amount that he's just gonna call with all the hands that he has something out of this board. I bet 30 and he snap calls. The river comes a 4 of hearts, I believe a diamond or a 8 would be better. He checks again and I bet 60 this time. He calls fast, I show the queens and of course it's good. 6 hours and 17 minutes of session, winning close to a thousand dollars. It's time to go home, this might be my last episode in Chicago area. I'm at South Florida right now, stay tuned cause there's a lot of episodes coming up soon. I would like to thank everybody from Windy City Poker that were so friendly to me, owners and staff. Thank you Kirk, Justin, Pete, Megan, Dave, Davey and so much others that were so friendly and welcoming to me. It's rare to find a friendly place when it comes to playing poker for money and Windy City is like this. I wish you all the best and that you always grow more and more because you deserve it and I hope to see you someday in the future. Thank you all for watching, hit the like and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. The mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player, I hope I achieve that goal and see you next time.